Hello everyone, I started off the page with a little reload so you can see how fast things load. And it works pretty fast, this is over the internet in my browser on a published web page. Uh, I released it as, I have it as a different link from the previous Tokyo demo because there are some UI elements I haven't added yet. And I'm going to be redoing the UI so it updates the word as you move through because one cool thing is now the map is continuous and you can kind of move through everything uh, of the regions that are connected. Uh, the islands, you can still quick travel to them because they are very far out in the sea and I don't have anything in between them and the main area. But also I imported the city GML uh, data. Mostly it comes through as a lot of polygon lists that I had to triangulate and that was the only real thing. It was a much quicker import than importing the points. And um, yeah, one recap of the points, that was 171 billion total points in the original source data set. And what I'm trying to do with my viewer is I'm trying to show you as close as possible uh, the original, well, when you're in the region, I am showing you the original source resolution of point data. And then further away, it uh, tapers down in detail. Uh, yeah, it's not really the most efficient way of displaying things, which is why I'm also working on doing some mesh import and I'm going to try to combine the mesh data with the point data using the point data to further refine the geometry from uh, what they give you as basic block shapes. What I'm going to do in the rest of this video is I'm going to fly all the way out into the northwest towards Okutama uh, city or town where they have a really nice lake and thing. And you can see I'm traveling through at a very fast uh, speed. When you're flying, it looks a bit slower, but if you're actually close to the ground, yeah, you're moving very fast and everything is loading pretty much seamlessly, but there are some frame stutters. And the main uh, drawback to WebGL is you can only access it from basically one CPU frame and maybe this year I will start exploring more with WebGPU where uh, then we can have like a loading queue instead of... So a loading queue that is separate from the graphics rendering queue. And yeah, it will be uh, quite interesting to see how WebGPU fares with this. As well as, um, like one uh, person mentioned in my previous comments, having like an infinite render distance. That's also a little bit easier to set up with WebGPU because WebGL only gives you... I think there's some issue with the way it does the clipping planes and stuff like that. And uh, Web uh, 3JS has this thing called a logarithmic depth buffer. But one problem with that is that your renderer will have to um, write depth values in the pixel shader, uh, which that would be, yeah, that would start becoming a little less efficient. Right now, this is just like the simplest point renderer uh, that you can get, mainly the test with this is this is a proof of concept into like what kind of bandwidth I can handle and like how low cost I can handle it which I did want to share in the past seven days I served over like 1.2 terabytes of map data of point cloud data and the cost for me is zero because it actually went through the cache or the CDN basically and as long as you hit it through the Cloudflare cache, you don't pay for the, um, yeah, 
Uh, for cash misses, of course, it does hit my R2 bucket, but those are few enough that they fall under the free tier. Mostly what I will have to just pay for is the storage, which is compressed down to 300 gigabytes from multiple terabytes of data. And as you get to the forest mountain area, it starts getting a lot choppier, so I'm going to uh, reduce the level of detail to high. High is actually still very detailed. It's, um, it's just ultra is always the source resolution, which is sometimes in like one chunk. There are, there are chunks in the data set that are like 70 million points in just a single chunk that you see. And And yeah, and in a lot of the, yeah, I really do like the way that the trees look through point rendering. Maybe I will continue doing um, that kind of thing as I uh, mesh other things like the houses. I might still continue with some kind of point list rendering for my vegetation. It looks it looks pretty good, I would say. And yeah, so I'll just keep on continuing. And uh, yeah, I need to update the UI so that it shows you the changes as you get into different regions and I want to have like a 2d map that you can cl click to fast travel and there's and then I want to have it tie into my other voxel thing where maybe you can select an area that you want to clone into voxels and then spawn a multiplayer um, session out of it where multiple people can be editing those voxels. And yeah, with the voxel stuff, I want to improve the, the editor to have more tools, let you easily place walls and all that kind of thing. And yeah, and finishing off with some fast travel to some of the islands and Mikurajima Village is definitely one of my favorites. And it was basically the, the last one I imported because it was very tough with the trees actually. <laughs> 